Welcome to the game review for Borderlands 3. Back friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to game reviews, I hope you're well today. And it's no surprise that today's game review is all about Borderlands 3. Yeah, I'm sure a few of you have been wondering why it's taken me so long to do the review. Um, I have been working on learning all about the new game. Full disclosure, I'm a long-term Borderlands fan. I have got all the different Borderlands that have come out. I've got uh, umpteen copies of Borderlands 2, which is my favourite game. So let's see how Borderlands 3 stacks up after 80 plus hours of playing. So guys, I'll try and keep this as um, as uh, spoiler free as possible. I've, I've included kind of um, footage that's er either early in the game or stuff that I've kind of went back and um, investigated areas. And you can see I've just fell off the map. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very special skill of mine. If there's somewhere to fall off the map that's obscure, I'll find it for you. Don't you worry. Um, so this game has been um, a long time in the making. This game has been um, basically five years since the last Borderlands game and seven years since Borderlands 2. So it's been a long, long time in development. And let me tell you, I am not disappointed one little bit. Um, I think it kind of speaks volumes to a company that's not been scared to take the time in developing the game and um, you know, coming up with a pro uh, quality product. We will go through a whole lot of things today for you. Um, you'll get to see so, so much. There's so much to this game. Like I said in the intro, I, I am about 80 hours in now on two characters and, and I'm, I'm thinking about um, making a third character. You can see the new junk, jump mechanics. Yes, there we go, we finally got up. Um, so, Sit back, relax, and enjoy what I'm about to tell you. Um, hopefully, it'll give you a good rounded view of the game if you're thinking about um, playing this at some point or if you've just started it. I know there's a number of people in the community that have already started playing this, um, and Mike and I are having an absolute blast on live stream playing this. I'm also playing it solo with Zane, and we'll get into all the good stuff about characters and all the rest of it in a while. Now, one of the things I would like to say is if you're looking for a looter shooter when these were this Borderlands really was the looter shooter that set the standard for others to come in 2012 2013 with Borderlands 2 but if you're looking for a shooter and you're looking for um a lot of uh, variation in guns this is the game for you because the number of guns in this game is just insane um, there's probably a gun class for everybody um, you know they have all the normal ones but they've gone up about 300% on what the guns do in this game um, you know you have assault rifles you have SMGs you have pistols uh, sniper rifles shotguns rocket launchers um, grenades oh, there's just so much and so many guns to find in this game it is not funny it's a bazillion bazillion gazillion guns and um, the beauty of the, the thing that I like this time around is that it seems like you should be able to take a low tier gun up through the game if you choose to now is it a good idea probably not um, you probably need to keep swapping your weapons, but at the end of the day, if you want to, you can um, you can take a um, gun through the game without a, a drama. Your favourite gun, which I, I think that was one of my criticisms of Borderlands and Borderlands 2, that I, I finally got the guns I wanted to use, and they were only good for about five levels. I, f I suspect that it's going to be the same here. I would really like to see a, a system where the, your favourite guns, but you were able to level them up or craft them so that they were um, they stayed up with the levels. Um, we will see. So let's talk for a bit about the, the kind of semi-plot about um, what's going on in Borderlands 3. So it's they, they really did a good job of segueing from Borderlands 2 to Borderlands 3 using uh, Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary DLC. And um, 
Birdlands 3 finds us basically starting on Pandora, um, which is long rumoured to contain vaults vault holding vast amounts of treasure and technology. And um, the decades prior, several corporations and bandit clans have laid siege to Pandora and tried to find the vaults. So everybody's looking for the vaults, essentially, and it's, it's caused constant conflict and bloodshed. Shed. And um, we then go beyond... Um, we are a part of the Crimson Raiders, as we usually are when we play a Borderlands game. And this game actually takes us out into the universe, out into the galaxy, and allows us to visit a number of different planets and different um, weapons manufacturers. Now, the bad guys this time round are a group called the Children of the Vault, and the Children of the Vault are um, headed up by the Calypso Twins. And um, yeah, the ultimate um, goal is to find parts of the, vo the Vault maps and, and ultimately find the Vaults um, before the Calypso Twins quite a standard kind of um, kind of storyline you will meet a lot a lot of familiar faces in this game I'm not going to spoil it for you above that but there's a lot of familiar characters around only they've all kind of grown up and they're all a little bit older which is I think is a really nice um, a nice touch also people characters that won't appear in the game are referenced to at times and it has all the humor that you would expect from a borderlands game now if you're new to borderlands you can see a lot of people have said you know the cell shading uh, nature of the game make it look very cartoony and it is it does have a specific look and it always has and always will don't be fooled by that the gameplay in this game is crazy insane and very very addictive at least that's my opinion and um if you can't have fun with this game, um, I'd be very, very surprised. I know some people are get just don't like the look of it, and 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 that's absolutely fine. But it's um, yeah, you're missing out on such a terrific game if a looter shooter is the genre that you prefer. And um, they have made the nice thing I like about Borderlands Three is they everything is familiar and they've added some additional tweaks uh, to the um, to the mix for you, so that you um, you can get straight in if you've played before. Um, but it's they've updated it basically in line with a lot of other games, um, but kept it as a Borderlands game. So I, I like that a lot, and we'll talk about that. All the, the various things that they've changed um, during this review. So let's have a look at what the UI um, looks like to start with and then we'll go from there. Okay, so let's have a look around the new UI and how it looks. So we'll start from the left hand side and work our way um, to the right. So essentially what you have is you have all your, your missions and side missions are split. In previous um, games uh, these have been split by kind of location, but it's just all kind of side missions versus main missions. And you'll see the main missions that have been completed have a little vault symbol next to them. Um, within this menu, though, you have um, a whole lot of uh, the holotapes that you're going to find, or tapes, or logs, or whatever they call it in this game. Um, also, you know, echo logs. And this is a new one, Iridium Writings, which you unlock later in the game, which I haven't unlocked yet, so I know where they are, I just got to discover them, I guess. So there's lots of little things within the missions that um, Echo Logs, Typhoon Logs is those ones. And usually there's three pair map to unlock, so I've unlocked a fair few of these. Um, and these are little side missions called Cree Challenges. The map's pretty standard, and um, the fast travel system is a little different this year. This game, um, in that you unlock different planets, and then you can then travel to different parts of that planet, like that, and you can drill down. If you haven't checked out my um, travel fast travel explained video in the um, 
in the game guide series please check that out because it will explain a little bit more about the fast travel but we're not going to cover it in this review um, then you have your inventory and that's pretty standard stuff um, you know you have four, four slots uh, obviously I've still got to um, unlock the artifacts but you obviously have um, your class mods your shield your grenades with this character I don't run a grenade so it's empty at the moment but that does fill up as you pick things up and then you have of course your weapon slots and and the nice thing is you can put little trinkets on your game slots and you would you actually um, you actually earn these in game as you play the game so um, you have a little trinkets on your gun and um, obviously you can um, you can inspect your gun as normal and you'll see that little trinket sitting on there. Zoom in and out if you like. There you go. Believe it or not, that's a shotgun. And the the weapons are a bit weird in this game. Um, it's a pistol. That's my dull pistol that I've just picked up. And you can see it's got he's got a little trinket on his on his gun. So these are obviously the other ones in your backpack. Obviously you can mark them to be deleted or mark them to keep or you can just leave it um, and I, I, I tend to mark it um, that was a reward we've just got you raised my frosty danga we are putting that away in a minute and I'll show you where that goes but yeah um, we can just arm that like that all pretty standard stuff for your backpack this time round can obviously organize by type by manufacturer or by score and I do it by score to see how strong the weapons are um, and then finally the skill trees um, and obviously this year the first time ever you can have two slots um, depending on what character you decide to choose um, you can have two slots um, uh, instead of one last in Borderlands 2 and especially in pre-sequel you would only have one kind of skill from your skill tree you can have now have two if you've got flak you can have two plus grenades so generally what happens is that your um, the the action skill that you choose if you choose a second one it will take the grenade away and um, depending on the character and obviously then you have these little um, these little augmentations that further strengthen each skill so you can see if you look down to the right and you see where the sentinel is now highlighted oh, sorry. then oh, there we go sentinel then you can have these augmentations and they they give you different improvements on that skill so you can strengthen your skill that way and then obviously as is normal you can spend skill points on different uh, abilities within that within the say for instance here the sentinel tree and um, obviously you can change what you like and you can get this mix to to work as you like which is pretty standard for the skill trees but the two action skills is really quite a different um different uh, thing for this game and then we have the guardian rank which is i believe um replaces the badass rank for borderlands 2 but you can't unlock that until you've played the story through um at least once so obviously you can see there's there's a whole lot of things that you can again buff as you uh, pick up um, bonus points for your guardian rank so that is the interface for uh, Borderlands 3 quite nice really quite nice I'll talk you through a little bit about Sanctuary 3 we are in Sanctuary 3 and this is the new base of operations <coughs> excuse me it's quite nice this is what is known as the crew quarters and you're allotted a room which is over here and as normal we have the bank in your room this time round rather than have it in a separate place so you can see all my stored items here which i've got quite a few i'll show you where to 
buy the slots for your bank um, in this one in a minute. So we've got all kinds of all manner of things that I've got saved in there. Some usually I'll only save those special weapons, those weapons that we get um, via the the quests, which have the red writing or or obviously legendaries. Um, I'm going to put this away. This one. So you can see that there it is there. And again, you can sort these by however you like. And you see with these weapons this year, there is a, a level requirement, but there's also a score, item score. And item score is pretty, pretty important. It kind of indicates how strong the weapons are. And then you have your base damage, your accuracy, your handling, reload, time, fire rate, etc. This is an anointed weapon, and we'll talk about the anointed weapons in a while now to get them. So that's your bank storage. In addition to that, you also have this storage here, which is quite nice, where you can place various weapons on the wall. So we will demonstrate that because I do have an SMG there, and you just have them displayed. But it's like an extra storage area, and you'll see that they light up in different colours. So that's obviously a legendary. There you go, and you can walk up to them and see what their stats are. And it is actually comparing to what you've got in your inventory. I think that's why there's red and green and whatnot. And to what you've got actually active at the time when you're looking at them. So that's quite nice. You also get these little um, decorations that you can place. Which you can buy or you get throughout the game. Which are really nice. They help to decorate up your room. There's Moxie's sign there. So that's your kind of little base operations. You have your quick change, <coughs> which is normal for our, from for, for previous games. You know, you change the head, look ridiculous, or whatever you like. Change your uh, skins. You can actually make it a color, which is what I've done with this one. Um, emotes. Yeah, you can change those if you like. I'll show you how to get the emotes. There is emotes in this game. And then you can change the look of your echo. Could someone please come appreciate this? Say, the last one, you can actually respec your whole skill tree if you want to. Here. To, uh, at least for Xbox, you have a button which has got three uh, lines on it. If you press and hold that down, you can bring up your emotes. There you go. And it does a little bit of a wave to your fellow players. So there you go, Sanctuary 3. That's where we are, welcome home. And we'll take you for a little tour. So what I'm going to do first, you're actually the golden keys are there. All in the crew area, which is nice. I'll take you up to the bridge and then we'll work our way down through the various people that are here and the vendors and whatnot. So here we are. So here we are on the bridge. This is where Lilith, Lilith lives. And a lot of the quests you'll return to Lilith and um, she gave us a nice little wave um, and turn a lot of the quests in. See, so welcome home to Sanctuary. Back um, out there, it tells you what you can expect. Obviously, Moxie's are here, uh, Marcus is here, this way. Tannis is back. Tannis has our area just off the bridge here. There. You can buy health and all kinds of stuff. There are a lot of cases that I want to show you the look cases that are a little bit different this year. So that one is a health health look case. Um, and when you open it, it has look health in it. You shouldn't have to buy health in this game ever. If you pick the, if you go the right way and you pick the right perks and you should never have to buy health in this game ever. That's Tannis there. Downstairs and you can just jump straight off if you like. Boom. I'll take the stairs. So we have Moxie's to the right and Marcus to the left. So we'll go to Moxie's first. This is Moxie's new bar. Come in here and uh, play the slots if you like. So this is an Iridium slot and that's just the money one. And where is Moxie? She's not here at the moment. I think if we come to visit she would be here. Moxie's usually behind here. 
See, that's quite a nice little bar. Usual. Um, there is a tipping jar. Yes, you can get weapons from Moxie. There's two weapons, the heel and another one. By tipping her, I'm not sure how much you have to tip her to get those weapons, but you can't tip her. I'm surprised she's not here though. So obviously off gallivanting somewhere. Um, and then you have Marcus's area here now. Here is the crew quarters. There's the golden Hello. box. There's the area we're just in. Basically you run through here and hook a right. If you want to go Moxie's go further up and hook a left. You got there's Marcus. So you have your standard machines. But this year as opposed to Crazy Arrow or this game as opposed to Crazy Arrow selling SDU slots. Marcus sells them. And they're pretty pretty expensive. But I'm glad to say that they've obviously tweaked this because as you can see um, I'm up to 28 slots in my backpack and there's another 4 to go. If you look at down the bottom there, it says 4 of 8. Um, 55,000 though, and it does get pretty expensive. However, you will get a lot of money in this in this game. Add, and add an extra 5 slots in your bank, all the all usual. So, if you don't buy um, an SDU, yeah. you're probably going to die. This does get quite expensive and you can see I've upgraded quite a few of these by uh, the numbers that you're seeing that I have to do for the next upgrade. So, yeah, that's More that. Death in my the um, vending machines work a little bit differently this year in that if you walk up to them, you will get this option, either X for shop, and it'll be different on different systems, obviously, or Y for refill. And if you hit what right, Y for refill, or refill, you're done with that, even going into the uh, the vending machine. And a lot of aspects of the game are like that That this year, and I think that's a nice little um, addition. And obviously, the vending machines just work as normal. You always have a kind of the item of day. Um, pretty st standard stuff. If you want to sell or sell stuff for your backpack, you can go in there. So, so, yeah, nice little addition to the game. Okay, so, we're going to go back to the full quarters. So if you're in the crew quarters, rather than go through right and down and off to the left or left and off to the right, whatever. Um, <laughs> if you want to go and see Ellie Mae, she, or Ellie, she's down here. This is her little domain cargo hold and she lives downstairs. Now the other person, very importantly, that lives downstairs is Crazy Arrow. And then Let's show you Crazy Arrow's um, vending. So look at this, there's all these. These have just appeared, so I need to have a look at those in a minute. Zero's back, so we have a whole lot of obviously little, um, little targets, a lot of missions we can do. There's Ellie there. Claptrap lives in here. And Crazy Arrow, what you want, is in here. Now, his shop is a little different this year. You can buy heads and skins and emotes and all kinds of stuff. You can even buy weapon skins. But he charges, obviously he charges Iridium and it's nice. They've, it's it's something a little bit different. And customization is big in Borderlands 3 this year. Very good. Thanks for the Iridium! Mm. He also has this gun. Um, Gun, you know, vending machine, and these are like legendaries on steroids. And I've got, I've actually purchased a few of these. You can see the level score 395, 365. These things are way and above um, where I'm at at the moment. I think one of the strongest guns I've got is in the 300s, I think early 300s. So, yep, they have special abilities. Um, on them, you can see mine's are even not legendary, it's 295, 301, so yeah, and they will have special abilities and you will see, if you pay attention to these, these actually match up with your character, so, so some of this, there's one that has a buff, if you have the sentinel, sentinel active, if you have the barrier active, iron bear, so that's um, something for Moe's, um, Digicon, again that's for uh, Zane, 
so yeah th these are uh, worth having now there will be a video up by the time this um, this review goes live and showing you how to get that's Eric is it oh Hermes um, how to get iridium how to farm iridium so that you can buy those so that is sanctuary guys it's, it's quite a comprehensive look around sanctuary but that's the new base of operations so also what I um, what kind of prompted me I, I remembered that you have to choose your character and you do this right at the start of the, the um, right at the start of the game um, after you kind of start the play the through the first tutorial there's four characters there's a siren uh, Flak, which I would say is the, the strongest, uh, he's the beast master. Zane and um, Mose, Mose is the gunner, and um, you choose which one you want to play through right there. You also have these new skills, this, this Borderlands, there is a slide like that, there's a jump, and there's also mantling, so the mantling up on things is all quite new, and boy oh boy does it really enhance the Borderlands feel. I would love them to remaster Borderlands 2 with these um, with these skills um, equipped, but um, <laughs> I can only dream that's what I want for Christmas. But um, yeah, they, they really do make a difference to the uh, the way that you play the game. And this game, compared to any previous Borderlands, feels much, much quicker. Much quicker because you're flying around the map, you're sliding around the map. All kinds of stuff. You can, there's a slide right there. So the catch a ride system has had a little bit of a buff this year in this game. Sorry, and um, again, you have the option of just spawning in your vehicle without having to go into catch a ride, which is very similar to what the vending machine does. Now we will take you through. You get an extra vehicle this year, so you get an outrunner, a technical, or a cyclone, and. Um, you can then have your weapon of choice and you unlock these as you go through and um, you unlock these also by hijacking other uh, vehicles from um, bandits and whatnot um, and you get upgrades to these as you can see that's pretty fancy Blo a bladed wheel we'll take that for a spin in a minute um, yep so there's all kinds of upgrades that you can um, you can do it um, what I just showed you just is just run through all these menus so you have the option of having a skin this year like this or what you can do is you can actually yeah, which is what I prefer to do is you can add, add your own paint accents as you need to so pretty nice um, upgrade to catch a ride and, and in my opinion these vehicles um, drive a lot easier than previous borderlands that's my feeling um, i can zip around the map but that too much of a drama in these vehicles obviously you have the uh, shooty guns and all kinds of stuff but i just find these a lot easier to to handle i try and run over an enemy this but um, yeah that's the new additions to catch a ride so if you do enjoy a good little boss fight, you are not going to be disappointed in Borderlands 3. There are a ton of them. And um, yeah, the bosses in solo are pretty, pretty, not pretty uh, difficult enough. you got to figure out the patterns and how to um, how to work around them. Um, co-op is a lot of fun. Uh, Mikey and I have played a lot of co-op. We are doing that in stream. Pretty much every weekend having an absolute ball. It gets really, really crazy when you are uh, when you're streaming and when you're playing in co-op. But it's worked pretty nicely. Mikey has had a few issues, but not too much. Um, it is a bit better than Borderlands 2, I can tell you, as far as servers uh, are concerned. And yeah, this I could go on probably for another hour on this, but we're going to wrap it up now. I think Borderlands 3 is has definitely been worth the wait i'll absolutely love it but as i said at the start of the um the start of the review i am um, you're preaching to the converted here because i'm a long-term borderlands fan having said this we're probably the most critical of uh, new games that come out in the series so uh, it's probably a, a, a good uh, gives you a good overview of the game i would certainly certainly recommend you buy this if this is your thing 
I would rate this four and a half, four and a half out of five. It's almost a perfect game. There are a few things that I, I, I'm just not uh, fully um, happy with. The fast travel system, I'm not a fan of, I've got to be honest. And a few minor niggly issues, but um, overall, this game is just awesome. And it is a little bit more of the same in some respects, but boy, oh boy, it's gone up many many levels compared to borderlands 2 it's probably 500 percent above borderlands 2 as far as what you can do with it um what the enemies how many enemies are around how many areas the way the maps are etc etc and go on and on and on i love the game and i highly recommend that you pick it up if if you enjoy this type of looter shooter and you can you don't mind that cell shading look of the game. There you go. Everything you want to know about Borderlands 3. I hope you've enjoyed this game review. And if you have, a like rating is always appreciated. It really does, does help the channel. If you want to keep up to date with everything that's Borderlands, make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned on. And we will catch you next time on Gaming for XP. See ya! There you go, there is the lowdown on Borderlands 3. I hope you've enjoyed the game review. If you have, a like rating is... <laughs>